Lila give us the right address? She lives here? Not that there's anything wrong with this place, it's just, uh... A bit of a step down from the Palais Marmonia. You know, it's common courtesy to make sure the homeowner isn't an earshot when you're denigrating their abode. Ah! Okay, when did popping out of thin air become all the rage? First Catherine and now you? I was just out on a shopping trip. I ran out of macaroni, so I went to grab a few more bags. I used to have a much wider range of choices when it came to food. But now I'm finding that simple, traditional home cooking can be quite delicious too. Not at all. As long as you have different kinds of sauces in, you can have macaroni and tomato sauce one week, macaroni and bolognese the next. Oh, sounds like you're really struggling to cope. How rude. Questioning my cooking skills, the audacity. It's not like I have a very eventful life these days. Actually, I barely leave the house. So I don't see how it's unusual that my meals are a little simpler now too. Besides, I'm sure I could master dishes like la lettre fossilor or blubber profiteroles in no time, if I felt so inclined. Ah, there it is. You don't know how to cook. <laughs> Not yet, maybe, but... Anyway, what are you even doing here? I do hope you didn't come here just to ogle at my fall from grace. Let me first be clear that I'm not taking guests at this time. So if you're just here to clown around, then please be on your way. Shoot! Sorry! We're sorry! Please don't be mad! Yeah, exactly! What the traveler said! Paima wasn't trying to make fun of you. Hang on a sec! You aren't exactly holding back either! My help? Uh, well, maybe you're forgetting that I'm no longer the mighty Hydro Archon. I don't even have a vision, you know. Don't worry, it's nothing that serious. It's just very specific, and you're the one with the power to help! Oh? Well, if that's the case, then... Fine, I'll spare you the lecture about your attitude just now. So tell me... What specifically makes this matter so... specific? Ah, I see. I knew you couldn't have come all this way just to amuse yourselves at my expense. After all, I was once the brightest star in all of Fontaine, well versed in all the various performing arts. A mere musical is well within my capabilities, <laughs> but... Given the present circumstances, I'm afraid I must regretfully decline your casting request. How come? It sounds like this would be a breeze for you! True, but I have made a decision to retire from the stage. Although I am no longer required to play the role of the Hydro Archon, the time I spent inhabiting that character has left an indelible mark on me. Centuries of pretending to be a different person changes you completely. I'm not the same person I once was. Of course, that can't be undone now. It's too late, and I have no intention of reinventing myself all over again. But at least I can say that I no longer desire to play any new roles. Now, Paimon can understand, but this is just a one-off part to fill in for someone who's sick. Surely that's okay! Whether it's a one-off or not, it's a boundary that I've committed to no longer cross. If I make an exception to the rule now, I'm just leaving a back door for myself. Which would be the same as not having a boundary in the first place. So I'm not going to perform, and that is that. Okay, guess there's no convincing you. Well, is there anything else we can do to help out the troop? Otherwise, they'll just have to disband without any fanfare. Do you know any other actors who might be interested in the role? Nope. Short and to the point, okay. I've never been great at maintaining relationships. Besides, anyone I've ever worked with probably couldn't wait to get rid of me. Since I'm just an ordinary person now, they'll probably just laugh in my face if I go asking them for help. 
True, but... I mean, could you even blame them? I show up out of the blue, begging and groveling for their help with a show they won't even get paid for? Oh, no way. I'm dying from embarrassment just thinking about it. Nope. Not happening. Well, is there anything else we can do? This performance really means a lot to the guy we're working for. Have I not made myself clear? You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't want this job, nor do I know of anyone else who would. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean for that to sound so harsh. I wish I could help, really. But if I thought I had the answer to this problem, I would have said so by now. It's all right, Farina. Paimon just wanted to make sure we tried everything. Oh, everyone in the troupe will be so disappointed. Yeah, I guess that's all we can do now. All right, then. We'll see you around, Farina. Uh, toodaloo to you, too. I'm going home to take a rest now. That's besides the point. I'll ask you again. Why did you start looking for a replacement without my consent? When did I tell you I'm going to take a step back? You didn't need to say it. We've known each other for how long now? We know the signs. But you never tell us about your illness, even when it's clearly flaring up. And that gives you the right to make a decision on my behalf? Shortly after you left, the troop's lead actress came to the Adventurers Guild, she believes that she's healthy enough to perform. Excuse me, but can you both take a moment to discuss something else for now? The adventurer assigned to your commission has returned. Sorry, I was just dealing with a little misunderstanding. So, how did your conversation with Farina go? Sadly, it's a no from her. We tried to persuade her, but she wasn't having it. She doesn't want to play the role for personal reasons. I see. Well, circumstances have changed a little, so maybe that's not such bad news after all. You see, our leading lady has just informed me that she's well enough to make it to the show after all. Staging the musical with the full original cast was always the dream, of course. Oh, right! Sounds like everything worked itself out then! Yeah, she'd be livid! We'd get the scolding of a lifetime! Jeez! Is Lady Farina really so harsh with people? Only joking, calm down. So, uh, guess we can consider this case closed now, huh? Despite the fact that we failed to complete the commission, we were still racking our brains for ideas on the way back here. <laughs> <sighs> Look, there's no point arguing with you about this anymore. You've made yourself very clear, so I'll stop looking for a replacement. This is the last chance we have, though. If your illness flares up again, there won't be time to find anyone to replace you. So, are you absolutely sure you'll be able to handle it? The whole team is putting everything they have into this final performance. We have to make sure it goes ahead. Yes, I'm completely confident. I've been taking a new medication from the doctor, and it's working brilliantly. I'll definitely be able to tough it out until the performance day. I share everyone's desire to commemorate all our years as a troupe with a proper farewell show. So the last thing I want is to be left out. 
every one of us thinks of this troop as their home, myself included. You're right. I'm sorry. I let myself get too worried about the show. I should have asked for your permission first. Ah, all's well that ends well. Sounds like the show will go on. Uh, sure. Uh, hey, how did you... Uh, I, I was just passing by because... I realized I forgot a couple of items on my shopping list. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm coming. No need to drag me. Uh, ahem. Hello, one and all. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation just now. Farina? Didn't you say you were going to take a rest at home? What are you doing here? I... I was just ever so slightly concerned about the situation you mentioned. Yes, a teensy bit concerned. That when you came to talk with me earlier, I jumped right to explaining my position and said some strongly worded things. And all before I even had a full grasp of the situation. Anyway, I just feel a bit bad about how it went down. I'm sorry, Paimon. Oh, it's totally fine! Paimon didn't take any of that personally. You really have a knack for asking the most uncomfortable questions, don't you? I felt very sheepish, having had a change of heart after flatly refusing you. And then, to make matters worse, you caught me. But in any case, it sounds like the issue has already been resolved. Yeah. When they said they were gonna ask for your help, I almost had a heart attack. I mean... How could we be worthy of having Lady Farina star in our show? There's no need to think like that. And no need to keep addressing me as Lady. Just Farina is fine. I was wondering, if this troop is so important to all of you, why does it have to disband? If the difficulties are purely financial, then there must be a solution. You could put the shows on pause while you look for a sponsor, for instance. Everyone seems so devoted to the troop. I'm sure if you keep chipping away, you'll find a way through. <sighs> we all want to believe that, but some things are just beyond our control. Everything's been going downhill ever since we lost our director. She was the heart and soul of our troop. She kept us going. Her name was O'Reilly, and she was the founder as well as the artistic director of our troop. And tragically, she was a victim in this serial disappearances case. What? That's actually how I recognize these two. It was all thanks to their efforts that the true culprit was brought to justice. <sighs> but still, no sentence can bring our director back to us. She was a loyal fan of your performances, Lady, uh, Miss Farina. They were what first inspired her to get into musical theater. She rallied many people around her who were destitute or had lost their sense of purpose in life and convinced them to join her troupe. She wrote her own scripts, acted on stage, and mentored each and every one of us. People loved our performances back then. We seemed to be going from strength to strength. Things were really looking up for us. And then disaster struck. Yeah. After that, the entire troupe fell into disarray. None of us know anything about script writing, let alone how to handle the business side of things. We've been doing the best we can. But despite our efforts, things are slowly but surely falling apart. It's agonizing. But ultimately, we'd rather end things now on our own terms than stick it out to the bitter end and watch all our dreams turn to dust. Oh. <sighs> what a terrible waste. A gifted artist from humble beginnings, who achieved so much and no doubt had much more to give. And then her life was so cruelly taken. I suppose it's fair to say then that this final show, besides being your farewell to the stage, is also your final gift for her? Yes, exactly. We all miss her terribly. Well, good thing I followed the Traveler here. After hearing this tragic tale, I can no longer stand by and do nothing. Uh, Farina? I know what you're thinking, but I by no means plan to cross the boundary I've set for myself. Besides, they're no longer looking for a replacement anyway. I can't.
can, however, provide some artistic guidance from the vantage point of a highly experienced audience member. But only if you feel this is something that would help, of course. Oh, uh, most definitely! We'll take any guidance that you can give. We unfortunately don't have any budget for a consultant, though. Will that be a problem? I don't need any compensation. All I'd ask in return, if you're willing, is that you tell me some more about the life and work of your late director. Something I've begun to realize since my departure from the Opera Epicles is that there's a lot you don't see when you observe everything from on high. The law only judges criminal behavior and does not weigh human emotion. The court's verdict can settle the question of criminal liability, but what about all the unresolved emotions of the parties involved? What happens to them? An interesting answer. But if you ask me, I think all emotion shall ultimately return home to the heart and slowly settle with the passage of time. Take, par exemple, how this troop pines for their late director. Things such as this I have never witnessed before. And so I should like to observe, perchance to understand. Still a fan of your old dramatic monologues then, huh? You just want to get back in on the action, don't you? No, no, no. This is a completely different situation. <sighs> Pearls before swine. <sighs> the name's not swine, it's Paimon! Would you be willing to join me? Come on, take a break from adventuring to listen to a story. Thank you all so much. Our director was a huge fan of Miss Farina's performances, as of course we all are. All right, follow me. We'll go to our usual practice space. Please excuse the size. It's a little on the smaller side. Lady Farina doing here? Hello all. Allow me to explain. As of today, Lady... Uh, Miss Farina will be supporting our production of the Little Oceanid in the role of Artistic Consultant. These two over here are the ones that made it possible. They kindly reached out to Miss Farina on our behalf. I'm sure they need no introduction. You bet! That was the trial of the century! You helped bring our director's murderer to justice. We can't thank you enough. Oh, please don't mention it. We're just here to join in on the fun. So, you were saying... The Little Oceanid? Yeah, that's the name of our final show. It's an unfinished script left behind by our director. One of our greatest regrets is that she never got to complete it. So, if we can bring it to the stage and make it a successful show, we can all take some solace in that. Wait, but if it's not finished... Yeah, we've been battling issues on every front, trying to realize this dream. Anyway, let me give you a quick summary of what the story's all about. The protagonist of the story is a young Oceanid who transforms herself into human form, despite the protests of her family. She longed to live just like any other human. And sure enough, she found friendship and even love. Everything seemed perfect. But one day, her true identity was exposed, and her world came crashing down around her. So far, so good. A classic tale. What happened after that? That's one of the issues we've been trying to deal with. Unfortunately, this was as far as the director got with her script. We need a proper ending so we can bring this musical to the stage. But people have different opinions on which direction to take it in. We still haven't decided between a happy ending or a true-to-life tragedy. By true-to-life, you mean the director's sudden disappearance? Yeah. 
like they say, truth is stranger than fiction. But then there's the question of whether we really want to use the stage to pass our raw pain onto the audience. Exactly. A lot of the time, people come to watch a show just hoping for some light entertainment. We have to consider their emotional stake in this, not just our own. And one last thing. We're still waiting on confirmation from two of our main actors. The first is Paulo, who plays the protagonist's lover. He's locked himself away to focus on writing an ending for the script. But the deadline's passed, and we still haven't heard from him. The other is Vilmont, who plays the main antagonist. He took the director's death pretty hard. Hasn't set foot in the city since. He did write to us, promising that he'll be there for the final performance, but we haven't seen or heard from him since. So we're not really sure what to make of that. Huh. Although... Now that we have Miss Farina helping us, maybe we should take the opportunity to get everyone back together. What opportunity? What do you mean? <laughs> maybe you're unaware, but your name has always been like a rallying cry for us. Our director was constantly singing your praises. All of us look up to you as a role model. <laughs> oh, stop! You're making me all flustered. <laughs> Although, <laughs> not in a bad way. Um, I suspect the reason they're dragging their feet is that they have their doubts about whether the show will really go ahead, considering all the issues you've been facing. But one by one, all the obstacles are being removed. Now is the time to rally the troops. Makes sense. Okay, priority number one, let's check in with Paulo and see where he's at with the ending. He went back to Poisson a few days ago, said that staying in a friend's home might help him to relax and escape the feeling of isolation. I thought the last thing his friend would want right now would be to take visitors, given that Poisson was flooded not too long ago. But I guess it's the opposite, a friend in need and all that. Yeah, maybe you could use some company. Poisson? Nothing. I suppose my presence will be indispensable if we are to restore his faith in the show. So allons-y. To Poisson! If I remember correctly, this is where he's staying. Who is it? It's me. Is the script ready? You came all the way here for that? Uh, Alright, forget that for now. Just come on out. We've got some great news. Nice try. Look, just give me some time, okay? I'm just wrapping up this last part of the script. I'll be out once I'm done. Okay then. Looking forward to your masterpiece. So, as expected, he's missed the deadline. <sighs> the ending is one of the most important parts of the show. Even once he's done, it isn't final until we've all had the chance to read through and make sure we agree on it. Hmm, someone told me they'd just seen you in Poisson. I assumed it was a case of mistaken identity, but sure enough, here you are. And Farina, too. <sighs> I was wondering if we might run into her. So, you're here for Palo? Looks like he could be a while, so feel free to take a stroll around town in the meantime. I've made all the arrangements already. Oh, it's okay. We can just wait here. Uh, thank you for being so considerate, Miss Navia. That sounds wonderful. We'll take that stroll. Get over here, you! How oblivious are you? How are things in Poisson now? Any better? Things are on the mend, but it's a slow process. Some people may never recover from the trauma they experienced. I'm sorry to hear that. I wish there was something I could do. Please, must our conversations take such a depressing turn every time we meet? 
We all have painful memories, but we don't have to let them cloud everything we do. And if you're trying to make a new start, perhaps it's best if you don't bring up the past all the time. Thank you for your words of comfort. You make a very good point. But for now, at least, I think I should stay with the way I'm feeling for a while longer. It's okay. These things take time. Moving on from a painful experience is easier said than done. Which brings me to why I'm here. I thought you should probably know that not everyone here is ready to forgive and forget after the Hydro Archon's inaction in the face of catastrophe. To avoid upsetting the peace, I told the townspeople that everyone here is a member of the theater troupe, and that you are just an actress playing the role of Farina. It's not a perfect solution, but hopefully it means you won't have to lie low while you're here. That's so thoughtful of you, Navia! Well, what do you expect? I am the courageous and considerate president of Spina di Rosula, after all. Like my father before me, anyway. That was all. Look after her now. Off we go, then. Let's take a look up there. I don't have any friends that I can be frank and honest with, so maybe she's right. You're the closest thing to friends that I have. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who share the memory? I'm so grateful that Miss Navia was so understanding. To be perfectly honest, I didn't know if I was ready to meet her. It's always easiest to just run away from your problems. But that never fixes anything. You can't get around the obstacles without facing them. So that's why you were nervous when they brought up Poisson. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared of coming back here. Still, I felt it was something I had to do. As I was saying before, I want to see for myself the things that I never could in the past. I'd be overjoyed if the people here could find it in their hearts to forgive me. But they're more likely to unleash a tirade of vitriol against me. Which, of course, I completely understand and accept. Yeah, I can tell people are watching me. I'm sure some people here see the idea of someone coming to Poisson dressed as the Hydra Archon as extremely disrespectful. I used to be terrified of the gaze of other people, especially when they had suspicion or resentment in their eyes. I guess I wasn't quite ready for this after all. I'm not surprised you're making yourself go through all of this. I can't let myself see only the things I want to see. How would that make me any different from before? Look! There seems to be a crowd gathering over there! Probably time we made a move. How about we check out Spina di Rasula's ship? We should have a view of the whole of Poisson from there. Probably just wanted a relaxing stroll, and here I am dumping all this heavy stuff on you. We don't mind. It's actually refreshing to see a different side of you. Great. Well, I appreciate your company, so please don't disappear just yet. I don't know whether you can tell, but 
The years of suffering and loneliness aren't the only reason I have a hard time facing up to who I used to be. As I stand here by the ship, I can't get the images of the rising water out of my mind. One after another, people were taken by the water. All those treasured lives and memories washed out of existence in an instant. They thought their god would protect them. They had absolute faith that when disaster struck, a divine power would save them from harm. And all the while, I played my part to perfection to convince them that was true. But then the floodwaters finally came, and the Hydro Archon did nothing. You shouldn't look at it like that. You are only doing your duty. I've had to go through so many moments like that for the sake of protecting the truth. As time went on, it got harder and harder to bear. And I became more lonely and isolated. Eventually, I realized I had nothing left except the truth. I became terrified of completely failing in my task and was haunted by the thought of being left all alone weeping on my throne. Fortunately, we were able to avoid the worst case scenario thanks to the help of heroic individuals such as yourselves. Everyone rose to their responsibilities, and I finally regained my freedom. But on some level, freedom also means no longer being needed. I have no further use to people. <sighs> Lima would have never imagined you'd see it that way. A reward? I guess so. And back then, I didn't even dare to dream about having someone to confide in. I was scared of someone recognizing me for who I truly was and exposing the secret I swore to protect. Believe in the Farina you see on stage. She is the one you can trust. I had to keep all my feelings, all my curiosity about life to myself. No one could be allowed to know. That's what I really meant when I said I'm no good at maintaining relationships. So that's where you were coming from. Paimon totally thought you were just a bit of a diva at heart. Could you please get off my case? I don't know what's gotten into you today. I'm making an effort here. You could at least try to do the same. <sighs> I do. I once had nothing but the truth, and now I'm finally free to live my own life again. And even though I have no idea where I'm going right now, at least the choice is in my hands. All right, it's about time to head back. Polo should have finished the ending by now. Sure! Okay, let's head back and check it out! say you needed to watch what you eat? You're supposed to be cutting down on fried foods, not wolfing down copious quantities of fish and chips, you know? Ah, uh, come on. It's not every day we get to dine at Spina di Rosula's expense. Can you believe how generous she is? I'm not about to pass on free food. Anyway, my character doesn't need to be slim and good looking. That's your job. Are you kidding me right now? It's not your character's health I'm worried about, it's yours! I've spent my whole life battling the effects of ill health, and it kills me to watch you willingly ruin yours by filling yourself up with junk all the time. Oh no, looks like they're arguing again. We're back! Could you maybe put your differences aside for a moment? Ah, you're back! We've been enjoying Spina di Rosula's VIP treatment in your stead. <laughs> Paulo's nearly done. We shouldn't have to wait too much longer. Great! So you were discussing your characters, right? 
We heard she's playing the Oceanid who turns into a human girl. What about you? Me? I'm an Oceanid too. He was originally supposed to take the form of a crane, but he... <clears throat> outgrew that role. Well, the costume at least. So now he's playing the boar instead. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> the boar's not a bad character, actually. He's the one who raises the little Oceanid, yes? That's right. He has some pretty memorable lines, too. Like when he imparts some solemn words of wisdom to the little Oceanid. If you become human, you can reveal your secret to no one. You will face suffering and loneliness. Is this truly what you want? Wait, that sounds kind of familiar. It's the most important line in the whole script. I think it's a symbolic statement about our director's life and legacy. She kept quiet about all the trials and tribulations she faced in running our troupe, allowing us to devote ourselves fully to performing. It was only after she was gone that we realized how tough her job really was. You mentioned earlier that the troop is like your home. Yeah. I was born with an incurable illness, and once my family found out it couldn't be treated, they decided they didn't want me anymore. I spent some years taking whatever work I could find and trying to manage my illness with various medicines. But whenever I had a bad flare-up, I'd be lying in an alleyway for days at a time. It was like that until the director found me one day. She told me I had a great voice and asked if I was interested in studying singing from her. I said yes. She took me under her wing, taught me to both sing and act, helped me find Mora for my meds, took care of me when my condition decided to flare up. <sighs> I know it was all a huge burden on her. She sounds like a really incredible person. She really was. She gave everything she had to her troop and the people in it. All of us were so proud to call her our director. I was a lost child too when she found me. As the child of a murderer, my parents weren't around when I was little, so I got sent to an orphanage. The other kids were always picking fights with me. They'd say things like, Come on, you must be pretty tough if you're the son of a murderer. It was just to taunt me, though. I was an easy target, and they knew it. One day, I got beaten up so bad that I just couldn't take it anymore, so I ran away. I lost all faith in humanity by that point. Thought the whole world was out to get me. Hmm, let me guess. Fortunately, the next person you ran into was the director. Yeah, for the first time in my life, I was somewhere I felt safe. And I promised myself I'd stay here until the day the group parted ways. The day you hoped would never come. <sighs> How times change. Oh, you're finally done? Get your butt over here. There's someone I need to introduce you to. This is our new artistic consultant, Miss Farina. Farina? The Farina? Oh my god, how did you manage to wrangle that? Uh, please, the honor is all mine. I was profoundly moved to hear about your troupe and your wonderful director. I just wanted to do something to help. Same here! Even so, this is just... Oh, wow. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll try to calm down. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, the script, of course. Uh, let me give you a rundown of how the story unfolds in my version of the script. I'm sure you're already familiar with the beginning of the story. A little Oceanid decides she wants to become a human against the wishes of her family. She finds love and friendship in the bustling city. But then, disaster strikes. The people start to notice that all the fresh water in the surrounding area is slowly disappearing. The soil is becoming arid, plants and flowers are withering, and the people begin to panic. The little Oceanid, Cleo, and her lover decide to do something about it, and investigate the truth of the matter together. In the end, they discover that all the waste and pollution created by humans over the years has caused the fresh water to flee the land, as if driven by a consciousness of its own. Consciousness? You mean, the water is sentient? Water as a conscious entity. There's actually quite a few stories that explore this theme. 
Since the little Oceanid is a water spirit, she immediately understands how the water is feeling. She then tells her lover about her true identity, as well as the truth behind the crisis. Her lover accepts her for who she is, and works with her to find a way to bring the water back. However, unbeknownst to them, there were some people eavesdropping when she revealed her secret. The little Oceanid is accused of being directly responsible for driving the water away, and faces the greatest dilemma of her life. And then? In the end, she makes the brave decision to sacrifice herself to save her lover, and the rest of humanity. Huh? But didn't they all treat Cleo like a villain? Why would she want to save them after that? Well, she mainly wanted to save her lover, plus everyone who'd stood up for her. Through her love for her human partner, she was able to find an even greater love. One that extended to all of humanity. Surely the biggest strength of Cleo's character. There's actually something else that bothers me. You know the protagonist is supposed to represent the director, right? And she never had the chance to become a hero in our world. If we're serious about dedicating this show to her memory, we should make the ending as true to life as possible. <sighs> what about if... The little Oceanid is hounded to death by people who hate her, her lover makes sure her secret never gets out, and humanity continues down the path to extinction. That sounds like too cruel of an ending to me. And perhaps a little irresponsible to present to the audience. That ending would be a perfect mirror to director Aureli's death, both arbitrary and meaningless. On the day when she went missing, director Aureli had instructed us all, somewhat out of the blue, to leave the court of Fontaine and wait for her outside the city. We waited and waited at the rendezvous point, but she never came. By the time we returned to the city, she disappeared without a trace. We looked for her. The Gardamex looked for her, but she was nowhere to be found. Increasingly, all the signs seemed to point to her being the latest victim in the serial disappearances case. The director was the kindest soul in the world, yet she was senselessly sacrificed for the sake of a so-called experiment by someone who had nothing to do with her at all. Hmm. But doesn't the way she suddenly told you to leave the city suggest that maybe she had some sense of what was about to happen? It almost seems as if she was moving you to safety. I've been trying to follow up on that ever since, but all my efforts so far have turned up nothing. Vilmal might know something, but he won't open up to me. Vilmal? The one who's playing the role of the villain? Yeah. He's been overwhelmed by grief. I think the director's death hit him hardest of all. Grief? <laughs> Guilt, more like. Also, I... have a hard time imagining that anyone took it harder than me. Because... Well, speaking of the play being true to life, I... I was deeply, madly in love with O'Reilly. What? You... you kept that one quiet. It's time to be upfront with you all. No more keeping secrets from each other. We'll never be able to agree on the ending if we can't be honest about how we feel. I did tell her how I felt once, but she turned me down pretty much straight away. She said that we were all like brothers and sisters to her, and she never considered us as potential romantic partners. Not that it came as a shock or anything. It was what I was expecting to hear. So I told her I'd always be there for the troop, and I'd always be there for her. I said, maybe one day in the future, when everyone's settled into their own lives and on the up and up, and managing the troop no longer required her constant attention, well, maybe then she could reconsider what she really wanted in her life. And now, that day will never come. <sighs> Hollow. So if I'm the one writing this ending, then I'm gonna make sure it does right by O'Reilly. I won't let anyone get in the way of that. In that case, you have to straighten things out with Vilmont once and for all, face to face. We've all had our differences of opinion over the ending, but those two have never seen eye to eye on anything. One of them has to compromise if we're ever going to reach a final decision. Well, if that's where we're at, looks like it's time to go visit Vilmont. Are you ready to face the truth? Honestly, I'm slightly terrified. But for the sake of our final performance, I'll do whatever it takes. Funny you should ask, though. You really do get what I'm going through right now. 
I certainly do. Come on, everyone. Allons-y! <laughs> This is tough going. Uh, Dolphy, are you sure you can manage in your condition? <laughs> I could ask you the same question. Try to keep up. Ugh, as if this journey wasn't tough enough already without a roadblock. Don't worry, we should all be fine with the Traveler here. We don't need to take a detour. Uh, uh, wait, why are you all looking at me? You're not seriously expecting me to fight, are you? We're just curious, that's all. I don't think anyone's ever seen Farina in a fight before. Yeah, but don't you remember why? The Hydro Archon willingly gave up all her power so it could be converted into Indemnidium. Miss Farina said so herself. Precisely! <laughs> and I'm not even the Hydro Archon anymore, so all my power is gone anyway. Um, as much as it pains me, unfortunately, I should just stay put. I'm more like a uh, damsel in distress more than anything. That sounded so smug. Ugh, secondhand embarrassment is unbearable. Hey, lay off, all right? My bluff is hanging from a thread here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got carried away. Please help us out, would you? Aw, too bad. I was so pumped to feast my eyes on fight mode for Rena. Sorry to leave all the heavy lifting to you. No worry, piece of cake. Take flight. We got through a swirl. Yeah. Quake. This is order. Gotcha. These are about to get dicey. Whirling snow. Into the wind. Whirling snow! Solidify! Order guide you! Quietly now. Here comes the catch. Take flight! Yeah! Bravo! Good show! You certainly live up to your reputation. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Anyway, the path is cleared now, so onwards and upwards! Embrace the ice! Gotcha! These are about to get set. Whirling snow! I will have order. Take flight. Sakura swirl. I shall treasure this good fortune. Are you there? Huh? 
Oh, it's you guys. Wait, what's Lady Farina doing here? I can explain. We've been rounding up the whole troop. We now have everyone except you. So, you think knowing the truth about the director's disappearance will help you write an ending to the script that pleases everyone? <sighs> I care just as much as everyone else about making the Little Ocean a success. That's why I wanted to wait until after the show. If I open this can of worms now, I, I just don't want to make things difficult between us. We're supposed to be a unit when we're on stage. The Amal, avoiding the truth will not help anyone. Unless you mean to suggest that O'Reilly's death had something to do with you. I don't want to talk about it. Listen, Vimal. I used to think that my love for O'Reilly was a point of shame. I never brought it up to anyone. But now, I've made up my mind to put it all on the table. I'm prepared to face everything, to sacrifice everything, for the sake of the show. The little Oceanid cannot be complete unless we do justice to O'Reilly on an emotional level. <sighs> This is why people think of you as not being the smart one. <laughs> as you all know already, the troupe was kept afloat not from ticket sales, but donations from the audience. Of course, that was nowhere near enough. We took on side jobs when we weren't performing, but even then, the troupe's financial situation was pretty dire. So, anyway, one day after a show, a merchant came to me and offered us a huge sponsorship. In return, we just had to provide the audience with their drinks during performances. It seemed like a win-win, so I said yes to it on the spot without consulting the director. It was only when the merchant came to deliver the goods that I realized the drink in question was synth. Isn't that the drink paddled by the culprit behind the serial disappearances case? I, I freaked out when I saw the boxes, and I told the director everything right away. She was completely shocked as well, but she didn't reprimand me for making the decision without consulting her. Instead, she contacted the merchant and stated that the troupe could not agree to this collaboration. The merchant was furious, berated us for going back on our word, and threatened to sue us for damages. The amount was astronomical. There was no way we'd be able to pay. <laughs> and then... I was going to sort it on my own, but the director stopped me. She said that this was an issue for the whole troop and it wasn't my fault. But things only got worse from there. The synth merchant just wouldn't let up. And then suddenly, the director told us all to leave the city one day. I knew then that things must have reached a boiling point. I admit this whole thing was my mistake. I didn't dare to tell any of you the truth back then, and after the director disappeared, I was even more afraid to say anything. Yeah, I got Aureli killed. There, I said it! Happy now? Hey, don't say that. You traitor! You knew Aureli was in danger! Why in God's name didn't you tell us? What do you mean, you were afraid? This was a life-and-death situation! We could have saved her! How could you be so stupid?! Please, try not to get too worked up. Yeah, listen to him! You need to stay calm! Stay calm? How can I stay calm? This guy got already murdered! She was the love of my life! And he has the gall to try and high-road us, claiming that he kept his mouth shut for the sake of the show! How about taking some responsibility for what he's done? All I can say is I'm sorry. Truly. I wanted to apologize to everyone in the troop, but that won't bring back the director. What good is my apology now? I'm just a coward who made an awful, terrible mistake that I can never take back. Beat me up if you want. Kill me if you prefer. It's what I deserve. End my life so I can meet the director and apologize to her in person. Get out of my sight! Go! Get lost! I don't ever want to see your face again! That's enough! You've screamed and shouted at each other for long enough! Now pipe down, both of you! Can you stop conflating the show on stage with your real-life relationships in the troupe? 
You keep saying that you want to use this final performance to pay tribute to your director and celebrate her life. How can you do that if you're just using it as an excuse to vent your own emotions? <sighs> you're right. I'm sorry. <sighs> On stage, the lead role is the focal point of the audience's attention. And you're all used to seeing the director as the heart of the troupe. But in her own life, her greatest desire wasn't to be the center of attention. I can tell how much she loved you all, and how much she loved the troop. What she wanted was to build a warm home for all of her brothers and sisters. To shield you all from the storms that rage in the world outside. That's how you should remember her. And that's what you should be celebrating. I understand why you're trying to make her the hero of the story, but... Isn't she your hero already? After everything she did for you? Yeah. So think hard about what that means. And then think again about what you hope to achieve by arguing with each other. If you really hate each other and can't reconcile your differences, then you could just call it quits now. Why bother with the final performance if the group is already fractured? But you can't bring yourself to do that, can you? You care too much about Director O'Reilly and the home she built you all to let go. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't see what's so funny. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that... For a moment there... It, it felt like our director was back with us again. If she'd seen Paolo and Vilmont at each other's throats like that, she would have scolded them exactly like you did, in that same stern voice. Really? But she sounded like such a gentle person. Of course she was. Even her harshest lectures came from a place of kindness, and it showed. She really was a truly outstanding person. I... What you said, it... really puts everything into perspective. I'm truly sorry. I really meant for this to be a genuine apology, but... I ended up making it all about me and my self-pity. It's all right. Let's save all this for after the performance. So, the ending. What are we going to do about it? Clearly, everyone needs to take a step back for now and reflect on what really matters. When emotions are running high, things get lost in the fray. The end of the story needs to focus back on O'Reilly herself. She's the true star of the show. What do you mean? The Traveler is right. You once investigated that underwater synth base and recovered items belonging to the victims. If you could find anything that O'Reilly left behind, uh, perhaps we can get a better sense of what she went through in her final days. You really think that's possible? I trust that nobody would object to the ending of the story being based on O'Reilly's true feelings? No. Well, we'll leave this in your capable hands. Come, let's pay a visit to the Palais Mermonia. The rest of you, head back to the rehearsal location for now, and wait for our good news.